Hi guys, in today's video we have a 1999 Toyota Camry and uh, it's developed an oil leak. I thought it might have been the rear main but it's actually coming on the front side of the motor here. And then I did a little more research and found that it's pretty common on these four cylinders when they get up around 200,000 miles that the oil pumps the gasket behind the oil pump just starts leaking. It's it's an O-ring, and I guess it cracks. So we'll find find out. This is a pretty involved job, so I'm going to try to make a nice quick video for you guys. I'm just going to go over the highlights. I'm not going to show you guys how to take a bolt out, because if you don't know how to do that, then you're not going to be doing the job anyway. So to start off with, <clears throat> I'm going to take the alternator out here. And then the bracket in behind it, we got to take this whole engine mount off. Um, various ground wires to clear up because we need to get into this time, the timing belt cover. Um, also going to change the timing belt, the water pump, since I'm in here. Even though it only has around 50,000 miles. Um, since I've got to take it off, I'm going to go ahead and change it as well. So, And then I've already taken the wheel off. And then the inspection panel, which you, there's two bolts that go right here and here that hold the plastic panel on. They're just, I believe they were 10 millimeter. I buzzed them off with my nut runner real quick. Right here is the oil pump, the bottom of the oil pump cover. So, of course, we'll get the balancer out, get all these bolts out. Um, and uh, we will... Uh, revisit that but what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna get some good light on this and I'm gonna show you where this oil pump is actually leaking from I'll fire the car up be right back okay guys I set you up in here with some good light and just watch the oil come right out from underneath this cover right here and start running down this is the left hand side of the balancer here just so you get a in perspective and here's your axle and of course this is on the passenger side of the car. Hey guys, just figured to give you a quick reference here. It's pretty easy to see it leaking. So if yours is leaking from the passenger side of the car, this is probably where it's at. Just keep all your bolts in there. It'll be easy to put back on later. Okay guys, quick update. 
I have the alternator out of the way. And then there's three timing belt bolts. One back down here. And they have these clips on them. On the top two. Make sure you pop them off first because it just makes it a pain. The bolts are like three quarters of an inch longer than they really needed to be because they need to hold this wiring harness here. So there's also a little clip down here you need to take off. So you can get this little harness for this. Uh, That's the same harness that runs snakes down, down to the bottom. Okay guys, I need to get the timing marks right before I start taking all this off. And I know somebody was kind enough to put a mark on this balancer. Like I said, this timing belt had been done about 50,000 miles ago, so I need to see where we're at here. Okay guys, I got the balancer off. I had to use my balancer puller here. Um, I threw it on, I got the balancer off. It was a little snug. I was surprised because my Honda, you know, I didn't need to use a balancer puller on it when I did it, but it's not a tapered shaft, but there was a bunch of junk in there. Looked like some rust and corrosion. So here you can see the, uh, the bolt ones right here that you can get to. There's another one right up here. 10 millimeters for this cover. Okay guys, that was that was all that was holding it. It was just playing games with me, I believe. Oh, I see. There is one more up here. They lie on me. It's way up in here, if you can see it. Let me get you angled in here so you can see that hole. Right. Right up in there. To the left of that white sticker is a bolt. It's like a flush mount bolt. Let me get it out here. There we go. I got that bolt out. It's mounted up there to the left of that sticker. And Eureka, I do believe we have this. There's an upper and a lower cover. I believe they have them separated. Let me take a look up on the top. Okay guys, here I wanted to show you the two covers that we have here. This here uh, particular bolt joins the two covers together. And then you have the one here. That one, that one uh, surprised me and actually I forgot this one too. It's underneath. Um, these top three here are pretty visible. And then, like I said, that one there, it's kind of hard to see but you can feel around. I just grabbed it with a quarter inch drive ratchet. And then you come around here and you have one down here. You get these ones from underneath. That one is 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 uh, broke out, but that went there. And then I'm gonna pull it back on and then probably mock this back up, get me back on top dead center. And then uh, be back with you here. Just wanted to show you real quick my Gates water pump kit I bought off Amazon. I'll put the link in the description. Um, of course, it comes with the water pump, gasket, and then these are extra. That's the cam, and that's the crank seal behind the balancer. I figured since I had it apart, I'd take care of all that. And then what I'm expecting to be the culprit is this oil pump seal. And then this is the shaft seal. And I'm pretty sure this guy's going to be broken when we pull it apart. So just stay tuned. Hey guys, I just figured I'd show you my uh, balancer puller I got. I bought it from Napa. It's been a hot minute. Uh, the part number here is 2286. I don't believe it was very expensive, but that's the balancer puller I, I used. But it's been at least 10 years since I've got it. Um, so keep that in mind that part number might not be still current but i definitely needed that to get that balancer off because it was on there like i said there's some rust on the shaft okay guys i want to show you this we got the bolts up here we have one up here for the oil pump 
one right there, one right here, one right here, one right here, one right to the left of the gear. I'll move you over here, right there, and one right above the gear. Now, there's different length bolts. You, when you take them out, you're going to have to keep them in the right order so you don't get them messed up when you put them back in. And I'll show you a better shot of that once I pop this oil pump out of here. Now, don't forget this guy right here that I completely missed. The way I've seen it. I look the torques pick up for these. I do know when you tighten them up, you want to make sure that it's nice and even. Um, for some reason, I was just looking across that line right there. Wasn't following the oil pump. The oil pump drops down, so it does. It's definitely all the bolts this time, so I'm gonna get this guy in here and wiggle right in that groove. It should pop right loose. Yeah, I see what's going on here. You don't want to definitely pry straight out if you can. It sits on a a guide rod on the top. There, just pop loose. Just in case. Make sure. Here comes the oil running out. Let me grab a drain pan here quick. I'm going to mark this gear down, just so I know that's the bottom tooth, and see what I can come across. I believe I'm going to check the, the pump gear. I believe there should be markings on, on that pump gear. gasket. I was hoping it would come off in one chunk. <clears throat> of course it looked more than likely where it broke was where it was actually leaking from which is right up here. You can see that right there at that bend. It snapped and I took it off so I'll get the rest of that off there, <clears throat> let her drip dry here, clean it off good, and get it right back in. And then once I get it completely sealed back up, then I'm going to go ahead and change the water pump. Um, the water pump is directly above it, right there, and you can see it's a little shinier than the rest, because it was done around 50,000 miles ago, but I got one in the kit, and I'm going to stick it on. So. But I'm going to make sure I have this all sealed up before I have antifreeze leaking down across that. So stay tuned. Okay. Just curious here. I'll peel this, peel this off. Yes, it's more than likely what happened right there where that gasket broke, where you can see the separation there. It's more than likely where that was leaking from. Everything else looks good. It doesn't appear that it was leaking from the seal down here on the actual pump itself. So you can see the bottom of this pump is fairly dry. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in anyway. So I'll, sh I'll show you guys all that. And then I'm just going to get up here and uh, clean off this mating surface. But it looks really clean. So I'm going to go ahead and let it drip here a little bit and then I'll clean all the oil off. And then get the new o-ring put in that groove um, if you can see here there's a pin right here in the middle of the, of the screen and that's it's like a guide pin 
and that's what um, basically holds that whole oil pump on there other than the bolts so that's what you're working against okay guys there it is with the oil pump off and I went ahead and took the timing belt gear off of the crankshaft here and I went ahead and got another crank seal so I'm gonna get ready and replace this crank seal just gotta find something small to hook on it so I can hook a hold of it and try to pull it out here um, I've seen people use basically like a paint can lid remover anything with a little hook to get in there just don't score up your crank okay try to get you centered up here the uh i ended up just i punctured it with a little screwdriver and it popped right out and i bought this other one it is an actual duplicate down to the exact part number and everything so I'll link that in the description. It is the exact Toyota replacement OEM part that was put in this back in 1999. And I actually got it off on Amazon. I think it was like eight or nine dollars. Um, like I said, I'll link it in the description. But this was just cheap insurance since I was right here. Okay guys, I got the new seal in. I just used my hands and got it started and then I used the end of a half inch drive ratchet and just went around evenly and pressed on it gently and it pops right in um, these aren't these aren't like a thing you have to wail on with a hammer that's for sure um, that's just the way they're made they're a real close fit and uh, make sure you grease your seal up first and it'll go in right away you don't want it to grip grip a hold if it's dry so make sure you put a little uh, lubrication on the seal Okay guys, this is the orientation that the oil pump is on the engine and I marked this with a paint stick so I knew this was straight down, this is the bottom tooth and it's keyed. So that's going to in turn put this exactly where it was when you took it off. Some people pull this assembly off slide this out and just stick it right back in the oil pump itself that's one way of doing it this way be the same difference when i'm done so i'm just gonna I'll assemble it here instead of assembling the gear on the car so that's the main the main difference and i have my old seal that i pulled out and i'm glad i did because it's it's not looking too good i've heard people that just changed <laughs> the uh the o-ring seal and and then turn around and the shaft seal goes out as well and you don't want that so see I got some grease here I'm putting on um, it's gonna keep the seal from getting hung up when I put it in try to get here so I don't go up just you can see it keep it nice and level and just evenly apply pressure it's going in nice and even Okay, I did have to actually take that one over. I used a three quarter inch socket and laid in there and tapped on it with a rubber mallet. That one wasn't gonna go just by hand. Here we go. I have the O-ring in place. I used a little bit of RTV, which will help with the seal as well. And I'm gonna put a little bit here on the cover, on the flat area right around where the gasket goes. I realized that this is going to be the way to do this because I, I put the shaft, took the shaft back out of, out of the housing here and had to seat the oil pump shaft itself first. I 
and then just a little wiggle and boom she is <clears throat> I'll show you where all the, there's two different size bolts. As you can see, there's only two of the small ones, and one of them goes right here. And the other small one goes right here. Which you would know by the time you started putting putting them in, you'll know because the other ones are just, they're not going to hit any threads at all. They're just going to bottom out as soon as you put them in. So I wouldn't get too scared um, with not putting them. It's impossible to put them in the wrong holes, but I'm trying to tell you. You can put a long one in, one of the two short ones, but it's going to stick out so far that you'll you'll see it right away. So have no fear there. I pulled all this out and put it in my sonic cleaner. Uh, and I was like, I was like, ah, uh, I hope I can remember which ones were short which I did but it's not that big a deal because you can't possibly you can't mess up I'll just evenly tighten this down and uh, she will be good Okay guys, I got all the uh, 10 millimeter bolts on the oil pump, tightened down the 15 Ugga Duggas, we're good to go. I have my crankshaft seal in, now I'm going to work on the water pump, so I'm going to make a mess here. I wanted all that sealed up so I wasn't introducing water into my oil. Okay guys, I just popped off the water pump here. Make sure you look out for this guy. I got all the bolts out that I could see, and there's like a little metal uh, bracket that covers this part up. Here it has this little flush mount Phillips screw in it, which mine wasn't in very good shape. But I was luckily, I was able to get a pry bar, and a, I have like a Phillips socket that fits on a 3 8 ratchet, and I got was able to pry against it really hard and get it out. So I'm going to look for a replacement for this guy because um, I mean I can get it in there but I pity the next guy because it's pretty well rounded out and it needs cleaned up anyhow so uh, it's always a good idea make sure you got the right part and then I'm going to get in here and clean up the surface where this water pump was I'm going to put some rags in the in the orifices so we don't get any debris in the cooling system. Okay guys, try to get you some good light here. Uh, I cleaned that up with a, a wire wheel because around the area where this water pump goes. And in case you're ever in here and you decide you're I was wiping everything out with a rag. This is extremely sharp right here. I mean it's like it laid me right open there on my finger, so um, let's say get her good and clean, and uh, that's good. I'm going to go ahead and get ready and put the gasket on the water pump. Okay guys, we got our new water pump on. We have our refurbished oil pump on with our new seals in it. We have our crank seal way down there put in, and now we have to do the cam the cam seal I guess you'd call it here so we are uh, it doesn't look terrible but I, it's a little moist around it and I bought it so we're gonna put it on um, I already broke it loose I used a pry bar and against this shock tower here and put it in and uh, gave me enough leverage to get it broke loose so Stay tuned. 
Okay, guys, I got my new cam seal in there. I uh, didn't record the whole thing. It was way too long. I don't have a seal installer or a remover, so I pretty much speared it with a little screwdriver. Uh, they come right out. Uh, getting it in was a little trickier. I kind of just worked my way around. I had a pry bar I was using off a bracket down there, and... <clears throat> It was some redneck engineering, but it's in there. Uh, I am really glad I did change it. The old one was really brittle, so it had been a matter of time until it left loose and started leaking uh, pretty bad. So um, now the next thing will be to start getting the oil pump gear and the crank gear on, and then. The timing belt and at that point we'll do a uh we'll start it up it'll more than likely be tomorrow so um uh, just hang tight we're gonna warp ahead about 12 hours okay i have the uh idler pulley down here on and i reinstalled the tensioner the tensioner pulley um those are both 14 millimeter of course you'll put this one up and uh, just snug it and then back it off a little bit so you can move it and then uh, I need to get down here and put the oil pump gear on and the crankshaft gear for the timing belt and we'll get that belt thread on quick okay guys I have the belt belt on right now and uh, I checked the tension and it's pretty good so it is so I need to snug this up and then I'm gonna start it just like this for just maybe 30 seconds or so, let the belt run in, shut it off, and then I'm gonna recheck the tension. Okay, we're gonna give her a flame test here. Pretty good. Sorry, I got a little lighting issues here, but I can't let it run too long. There's no alternator, but everything else seems to be doing all right. Sounds good, it's not too loud. I'll check the tension after I shut it off. Okay, guys. The tension, the tension seems really good. I'm gonna leave it at that. It sounded great. And you can always go back in here, just pull that plug out and let that spring take up the slop after it gets a little wear on it. Um, might check that here next oil change after the thing gets a few thousand miles on it. Now I have to get in here. You guys can see that bolt. I'm trying to get in here where I'm actually pointing. That's the adjustment for your power steering pump. It's right in there. So uh, there's a good shot of it. Um, we'll get the, the belt on the bottom. Okay guys, I'm working on getting my top cover on. The bottom one goes on first, and then put your top one on. And then you have to put this bracket in. In a perfect world, I would have put the balancer on after I put this bracket on because these two lower bolts are going to be a pain in the butt to get to but we can still manage okay guys i got the bracket back on from underneath like i said it's 14 millimeter do that before you put the balancer on put your timing covers back on then your bracket then your balancer and then your power steering pump belt and then work on your alternator here that you just just swing out and then we just swung out to the side and then actually I'm forgetting a bracket here you pull first All right.
This one was being a little ignorant. Okay, guys, just wrapping her up here. Don't forget your grounds. I'll put them on when I'm done. Just uh, put this upper engine mount on. do this job with some limited tools I could have used definitely could have used a seal installer for this job uh, remover I guess and an installer but, uh, I didn't have this and I made it work but I will be getting some because it took way longer than what it needed to um, like I said I'm just a I'm just a shade tree guy here I don't do this every day or I would have had them a long time ago but I don't even know how much they could they are but they cannot cost that much so I'm gonna look into those there we go Pretty, it's pretty much daddy daycare, work on cars. And uh, I got a sleeping one back there that's ready for a nap. But I'm so close to finishing. She's gonna take a rain check. Okay, YouTube. I had myself shitting some bricks here. I found this bolt was laying on my table and I'm like, well, that's it's a pretty substantial bolt. Uh, that's not good. Well, I got to looking and it goes right down here in the side of the bracket, the upper engine mount bracket that I mounted to the block. There's a hole right there that goes through. Um, I was, that would have been bad. That <laughs> would have been bad. <laughs> I'm sure we've all been there, but it's also good to find that it was right there and you didn't have to tear half of your work back apart to find where said bolt went. And we've all been there too, and that is nothing fun at all. Hey guys, just wanted to show you this real quick. I didn't show you this on the teardown because I took it off uh, like a, a week or two ago when I was diagnosed and what was going on. But this is just a little splash shield. It's just held on by two 10 millimeter bolts right here and here. And that's, that's a wrap for this job. Tested my patience, but we followed through for the victory. Sorry if we're blocking you. Don't mind the power wheels. bolt we're gonna get the wheel back on this guy fire up get her up to temperature make sure the thermostat opens and draws the extra antifreeze out hey guys uh, one thing to mention when I did this I just put a bucket underneath the car to catch the antifreeze that came out with the uh, when I took the water pump out and it might have been a gallon or so came out um, and then I just topped off the radiator here and then I filled up the coolant uh, level and I got to fire it up and let the thermostat cycle to flush all the air out of the system okay guys all buttoned up I'm gonna pull it outside like I said run it let the thermostat open double check the coolant and check the oil but it, it really wasn't that bad um, just give yourself a, a real good day I did it in about I'd say five or six hours but then I have two smalls I'm watching my daughter she's a year and a half and she's just into everything every time I'd walk away to get a tool she'd be in there grabbing a tool or whatever I had just been worked on to she's into her uh, these are the this is the 
screw that goes in the water pump and it was stripped out and I thought I was gonna have to find one. Well, I got to looking and there was one in my pack. Well, this here is if, if you would happen to take the whole water pump assembly off and I didn't. These O-rings in this gasket, that would be for right in here. If you can see it in there or not. But in here where this tube goes, um, there's another one that shoots off there. It goes to the right. Um, you would have to take all those tubes off, which I would not recommend doing that. Uh, just put the water pump on the front. It's kind of hard to see here, but this is the new part in here. Uh, just take the bolts out of the front and leave the rest on the car. That way we don't have to mess around. So I wouldn't be afraid to recommend this to anybody that has knowledge on working on cars at least a little it's it's not really all that bad i don't know what they charge at a garage to do this but i can assure you it's a lot more than what i wanted to spend on this car so like i said it's uh about 75 dollars is what i had into parts that's the that's the camshaft seal the crank seal the oil pump gasket and the oil pump shaft seal and then the new water pump the new timing belt i got a pretty good deal off of amazon uh, i always buy the used parts when they're available where somebody possibly bought the wrong part and they open it up and then i guess amazon you know once they return it amazon can't sell it as new anymore but there was absolutely nothing in this that was used like example this this here was from whoever <laughs> had uh, opened it up the first time maybe they got in there and noticed oh crap i ordered the wrong kit for my car i don't really don't, don't exactly know what the deal was but it saved me almost 50 percent on that that was normally 85 dollars and i got it for like 42 so i'm not complaining but right here's the culprit of the whole the whole thing right here uh, let me get it oriented the right way we might be missing a part but that's it this gasket uh once it once it breaks inside uh you're done you're you're leaking oil pretty good so like i said thanks for watching that's your oil pump shaft seal that's your cam shaft seal and this is your crank seal so that's about about it of course your kits come with a new idler pulley and new tensioner um it came with two different springs i'm assuming they must have two different uh options there because the one i needed was the other one so all right good enough thanks for watching today and uh i definitely recommend handling this job on your own till next time like and subscribe bad mike's garage here's our parts when we were left over that's the o-ring that's broke that's what caused the whole mess oil was seeping by and messed us all up there's your water pump we changed out idler pulley tensioner and there's the seals we replaced um this is in case you're taking the whole water pump off the block which i wouldn't recommend so it's gonna be fine to have some extra parts there uh and then they gave me two springs and this one was way too big so it must be for two different applications and that's about it of course the old belt yeah so old toyota hopefully it'll be good to go for a good while after this thanks